how's it going? Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, thank you, thank you to anyone who is here. Um, as always, I got ready to this live stream in the nick of time. Um, just let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Um, so I always think I'm getting ready for these in advance and then I end up like running all over the place and trying to get things um, done as quickly as possible. Uh, I currently don't have a permanent live stream set up, so I actually have to set things up. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. So I actually have to set things up. So I grab my computer, my laptop from my normal table. And I bring it over here. I put it on this table. I'm still huffing and puffing. Whew. I put it on this table. I connect this camera up here that you will be able to see now. Ta da! This one. Um, and I have tons of things to like. I needed, I needed to print my reference photos. They're in front of me on the wall. Um, I had to prepare my trusty iPad. I had to take Ruth on a walk because actually um, we went uh, for, to the park this morning. We, we try to have her have a play session every day because she's super active and she loves chasing that rope we throw her. And playing around with toys like, you know, um, tug of war, what you'd call. Um, and so she drank a lot after that. And usually in these days, it's a little stressful for me because I don't want her to hold it in if she has to pee again. Because you usually finish the play, we come straight home, and then she uh, she doesn't get to pee all the water she drank. She pees water she drank earlier. Uh, so we're talking about dog pee in the first few minutes of the live stream. Let's see who's in the house. Thank you so much to anyone who's here. Mark Ohio, good morning, Lebron, and everyone. Mrs. D. Uh, Paris D. Black, hi from Paris, Columbus, Ohio. Good morning. So I actually visited Columbus. Uh, Mrs. D says hi, by the way. I didn't read this one. Destiny is lucid, says good morning all. Mark Ohio says I'm, uh, I'm outside of Toledo, Ohio. Uh, John Watercolor, hi Liron, I hope you're doing well. Uh, John, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to show you a couple of cool things. I'm going to try and squeeze a lot in the first hour. Um, I think today's live stream is going to be a little shorter because um, I have a lot of work to, to get done. So I'm going to try and keep it at a maximum an hour and a half. But as you know me, it may go a little overboard. Like all of the, even the painting lessons I do with students, like face to face, they always <laughs> go longer than expected. That's just how it is. Now, um, okay, if at any point the, the video quality drops or anything like that, let me know because I see some shakiness there uh, we are gonna upgrade our uh, connection soon so it's gonna be much faster you'll see me in higher quality I should probably replace this camera it's a little annoying this camera too I mean bring a better one here and a better one there um, or maybe bring this one here and get it up oh, I'll have to think about it um, Miss D says Australia 1 a.m. here on the 13th yeah I know so the time gap with Australia is so strange to me and I'm so not used to it by the way Ruth took off the moment I started talking I don't know why she hates when I live stream. Uh, Mark says, I hear you. Thank you so much, Mark. Crispy, good afternoon from Germany. Uh, Miss D says, I hear you. John says, I can hear you. Daiji Shinomori, good evening from the Philippines. Hi, everyone. Uh, hey, how are you, my friend? Angshu Roy uh, says, hello. Tulipan16, hi, looking forward. Perfect. Um, Evelina says, hello, everyone. Angshu Roy says, hello from Bangladesh. Crispy, these live chats are great. Thank you so much. Thank you to, to you. For tuning in, I hope this one's going to be entertaining, fun, teaching, maybe even, we'll see. Uh, Rex Rex says hello from Texas. Uh, Christina Halliwell, I hear you loud and clear in England. Perfect. Um, uh, hello from Asia. Kit Kito says hello. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Angshu. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about how I'm doing as soon as we finish with the chat. Cindy Talbot, hi from Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, shout out my name. Angshu Roy, shout out. <laughs> Consider yourself shouted out. Gail Check, highly run watching from Philadelphia. Uh, Angshu Roy, shouted out already. Felix Raphael, uh, best wishes from Scotland. Michelle Gerard, hi from Massachusetts. And Asha Kakde, just putting. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's weird. Um, so here we go. Let's go over what we're going to do today. Hey, James, how are you? James Baker, hello from London. To you and everybody, thank you so much. Billy Armstrong, hello from California, United States. So thank you so much for tuning in. Here's my plan for today. I want to show you a couple of um, cool things I've been working on, but we'll also demonstrate. I want to show you how 
to paint a bunch of uh, different still life elements. But here's the focus for today. And this is something a lot of people ask me about. A lot of people feel bad about how they do that. Uh, mixing colors. That's what we're going to discuss today. I'm going to show you how to mix interesting colors. Um, we're going to start with greens because that seems to be the problem for many people, how to mix interesting greens. Um, and I just have a bunch of still life pictures to show you and you can find links to everything in the description box. So let me show you. We have these um, peach and apples. We've got uh, let's see, we have avocados and asparagus and tomatoes. We've got this thing that I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a melon. And we've got these uh, bananas and other different vegetables and fruits. So what I want to do is show you just what we're going to go over these one by one. And I'm just going to show you a few interesting ways of uh, getting interesting colors. Now, let me give a brief kind of introduction. I'm actually going to get some spare pieces of paper that I have right here. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Now, we have 54 people here, uh, so I think we can get started. I'm going to show you something real quick before that. Um, let's move over here. I'm going to show you something real quick that I've been working on. This is really off topic. So if you're curious seeing what I do, regardless of watercolor, even I started working on my comic manga, same thing. Uh, I want to show you. So here is what I've got so far. So this is the first page. Now the quality isn't going to be too good because it's a pretty huge picture. So let me just make it a little larger. And you can see here, so this took ages. This is the first page. It's a story. Um, I, I uh, am going to do it. Where should I move? I should move here. <laughs> it's a story I'm going to do about Shaolin monks. Um, and it's, a, it's just something for myself. It's not something necessarily that you as the current audience uh, is interested in. I know some people are. So thank you for that. Uh, a lot of people have commented. Let me try skip to the other side. I don't know which way is more comfortable. But anyways, I'm going to stay here. Um, so there's tons of details here. Let me make it a little larger so you can see. Um, I just want to do this as the room fills with more people, more watchers, and then um, we'll get started with the demo. I see we have 63 concurrent viewers at the moment. So here we go. Just tons of details. Uh, worked really hard on this. Got the birds. Got this boy. Who is this boy? We still don't know. Check out the water effect. This I really like. Um, here he is, smiling, all happy, jolly, a squirrel. Then he discovers something, and it's a big mess. So, <laughs> this is what I've been working on uh, every spare moment I had. Um, very challenging for me, very different from what I usually do, impressionistic watercolors, in which you make things appear slowly and magically. With this, every line, you have to be confident, you have to put it there. Uh, it's very... Um, what should I say? It's very literal. I draw and sketch things as they are. There is no compromise. Like it has to be dead on accurate. Uh, so this is what something I've been working on. What we're going to do now is I'm going to fold it off, get it away. We're going to go back to the desk. I'm going to do a demo just real quick, showing you a couple of the ropes of mixing interesting colors. Uh, then we'll do some still lives. And later, once we maybe have more people, I'll show you again that page. And you can ask me questions about it, the story, whatever you want to hear. Hopefully, it will still be interesting to you. So let me see. Uh, let's see some updates in the chat. Now, I'm not going to read everything, unfortunately, but I'm going to go over the main ones. So Pamela, hello from West Virginia. Henry Tantiado, hello from the Philippines. And Carney Garcia, highly wrong. Lin Huang from Vietnam. Thanks, sir. Uh, and Carney Garcia from España, so from Spain. I assume that's Spain, right? Stephanie Corell, buenos dias, Steph here from Texas. You're making watercolor snack today. Yes, it's going to be a watercolor snack indeed. It's going to be relatively quicker, uh, I think. Barb says hello from Ohio. Uh, Marjorie Johnson says central upstate New York, U.S. chiming in. Ripped tendon and right wrist. I won't be painting along, but I sure will save this for some time in the near future. Well, feel well, get well, Marjorie, get well soon. Uh, ripped tendon. I don't know how bad that is, but hopefully it's not too bad. Um, uh, ZS, highly wrong. Have you ever worked with acrylics or oil paints? Once with acrylics, once or twice. No, a couple of times with acrylics, not oils yet. Uh, Marie C. Hooray Greens. Gelcheck is the manga hand drawn. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I want to. I wanted to initially do it just 
like this, uh, physically, traditionally, but due to some um, issues I had with it and just the efficiency of working digitally, I'm working digitally, it is hand-drawn. Let me show you. Do you see this drawing tablet right behind me? So I draw on that directly. There's a screen there and I draw on that. So it is hand-drawn, but it is digital, okay? Uh, so that's important. Oh man, um, your manga comic looks great. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Tulip Pen 16, how long did it take to draw the first page of your manga comic? It took me about four days now of working on that. Um, I'm working at a leisure, leisurely pace because I have a bunch of other things to do. If I'd work on it like a full day, it would take probably two days. Two full days, I could be done with one page. Uh, but I'm still learning. It's very challenging. Uh, Paulo ZVD says, Manga? Nice. Thank you, Paulo. Destiny is lucid. I've been meaning to create something new for a while now. Go for it. Kabrahimovic, hi. How are you? Uh, Anxu Roy, water seems so cool when you do it. Thank you so much. Uh, hello from India, from Sanidia Sharma. Mark says, oh, I was well represented today. Zine, how are you? Hi, Leroy. Nice to see you. Have you been to art school or self-talk? Self-talk. Uh, I've never been to art school. Mary C, good squirrel, thank you. Joe Bloggs, hi from England. Nancy G, hi from Akron, Ohio. Anxu Roy, have you ever drawn pencil portraits? Yes, I have. So let's do this. Let's get into the demo. So here's what I've got here. I have my Paul Rubens trusty palette. Look at all these pretty colors. Uh, what I'm gonna do is show you how I mix on paper. And this is big. This is something that I talked about a lot before, but I do know a lot of people are new to the channel. Uh, and of course, not everyone watched every single video, which makes sense. So I just want to uh, grab some paint and show you how when mixing on the paper directly, you very often get a more interesting result. Now, here's a little trick for you. Spray some water, make the paints come back to life after they dried. It's going to take a minute or two and then they're really going to be easy to pick up. So. Let's say we want to paint greens, a green tree, whatever. Um, I could go ahead and use, and this is, I see a lot of people do this, just use a green. Now that's perfectly fine. Um, the thing is, because greens are so dominant in so many scenes, when you use the same green all over, it's a bit boring. And that's the thing that a lot of people feel, but they kind of are stuck in that habit of using that same green. And even if you vary the value, if I'm gonna go like this, add some darks within it, it's still quite boring. Now, a next step would be to go with uh, different types of green, which I also see some people do. So they use this green and then that green. Now that's a step in the right direction. The problem is for me, that's still a bit horrifying for a few reasons. These two greens were made from different yellows and blues. And that's a problem because the harmony may be hurt by it. Now, if you're good, if you know what you're doing, you may get a perfect result. For me, personally, I don't. Uh, even after a few years of doing watercolor, what is it now, like six years of doing it pretty intensely, I still don't feel like I can get it too good of a result like that. So even if I'd go with this green right here and add a bit of that as well, and a bit of this green, and uh, this is terrible in my opinion, I don't like it. Now, of course, this is highly subjective, so do whatever works for you. What I do, and I showed it in multiple videos, is I split it into yellows and blues. So what I'll do is, I'll go with a bit of a blue, like this, and then I'll come back with a bit of a yellow. And that's how I personally like to create my uh, greens. I find that it leads to natural looking greens, greens that work better, um, greens that match the harmony of the entire painting, which is really important. So let me show you uh, more up close again just a few scrap pieces of paper because I want to show you this um, real fast. Let's do this other green here. So you see I have this beautiful uh, Prussian or Cerulean kind of uh, blue. And then to that I'm going to add a bit of my uh, beautiful warm Gamboge yellow. And what you usually get is a result that's a little more uh, well harmonized, if you will. Okay, and you'll notice this is a bit more of a muted uh, green. That's not always going to be the case. If we want to mute it, we'll add red, okay? Uh, because red is the only color that is not present here. So once we add some red, you'll get a brown, okay? Or a gray, depending on the three primary colors you're using. Now, the beauty of that is when you paint the sky next to the trees, they're going to match 
the greens are gonna match the blues of the sky because you're using the same blue. Okay, that's my secret, so to speak, which I share in almost every single video. Now, another aspect of that is mixing on paper. And that's something I will show you a lot today. So what I like to do is instead of mixing a flat green here and just going blue and a bit of yellow and get this thing, which is quite muted just because my uh, yellow is a little contaminated, I like to mix on the, uh, on the paper directly. Now, I want to show you something. I have here a more of a phthalo blue. If you want a brighter green, because my greens here are rather dull, a more tropical green, you'll use this lemon yellow and maybe a bit of this uh, phthalo-ish blue. You see? That's how you'll get a bit of a more tropical, perhaps, green. Maybe you can use even the other yellow. You see? That's a little happier. Um, but if you want a really strong green, yes, you'll have to sometimes use something like a phthalo. If you want a really strong and kind of artificial looking green, um, that's the one you'll have to use very often, okay? So, minimizing it to a few primary colors, and even if you're going to use more than one primary color, I still find the harmony is better, okay? So, I don't know why it works that way, but that's how I feel at least. This, to me, is much better than this. Um, so, just a suggestion to you now, even if you're going to use a uh, more muted green like this one, which is right here, it's still flat if you're going to use the same one all throughout the painting. And that's what I want you to avoid, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how I do this with multiple references, keeping the colors interesting. We're going to start with green and some avocados that we have here, and then we'll move on. Now, one important note, this isn't like a finalized piece. We're going to do a lot of watercolor sketches today, so we're going to have fun be a little looser uh, and not be too worried about like getting it. It's not going to be accurate at all. That's not the goal today. Uh, so I'm going to need, I guess, this one. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to see uh, the avocados well. And we're going to get started with, with this one, but let's see if you have any questions in the chat. Uh, I'll try addressing them. Um, Joe, thank you so much for enjoying practicing with my videos. I appreciate it. Uh, Destiny is Lucid says hello from VA. So I'm not sure what VA is. You let me know. I don't know if it's a state or a country. Cyan Pet Petnik, hello from India. Um, Anxio asks, what will you advise to newly watercolor painters? So if you're a new painter, just paint as much as you can and get used to the way you handle paint. That's the most important part, in my opinion. I'm going to draw the avocado as I'm answering questions. I really think, the, and let's start, uh, let's start from the left here, like so. I really think a huge part is just... Um, doing it a lot every single day um, and getting used to it. Don't underestimate the technique and control. That's like a, a very important part of watercolor painting and, and it's something that you can only learn intuitively. So you have to kind of get started on it. There isn't really, you know, watching videos isn't something that's really going to help with that. So sorry if my drawing isn't as accurate because I'm talking while I'm doing it. This time I decided to and I didn't even warm up today, by the way. Uh, I decided to do the drawing stage live as well because it's kind of an easier thing to draw, but still, you know. So here's our avocado. This is a bit rounded, and then above it's even more rounded. And then we have a bit of a shadow casting right through here. And this is good for a drawing, I think. So we can just get started painting it. I know it's rather small. I may hold it up closer to the camera in just a moment. Um, Barb says, good news, my grandson is recovering from COVID. Awesome. Thank you so much for updating. I, I was really worried about it when you mentioned it in the previous slide. He was very sick. No one else has gotten ill. Thank you for the prayers. You got it. I'm so happy to hear. Uh, everyone's congratulating Barb. Uh, Steffi says, hello from Munich. Uh, Dafia Imran, Stargate Campus. Please bro, shout out to Afnan. Afnan, shout out. Uh, I've been wondering about your manga looking very nice. I'm sorry because I'm seeing probably the chat delayed, so you'll have to forgive me about that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Allison says, hi everyone, I've started using Daniel Smith Green Appetite, genuine. Can you can then write in with yellow or gray or with red color? Bit of a cheat, but usually do and uh, makes life easier. Yeah, definitely. You go with whatever cheats that work for you. Uh, million greens, <laughs> green gold, I like green gold as well. Someone else from Germany. Yeah, we have a couple of th people from Germany. 
limiting the palette to only three primary colors has considerably improved the harmony. Cyan says, yes, I agree. So let me see if I actually see the chat. Yeah, okay, okay. I see the chat live. All is good. 114 concurrent viewers. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining everyone. So I'm going to start here with the avocado. Uh, now, unfortunately, I can't zoom in with this camera, so you'll have to forgive me about that. You know what? Should I just draw it larger so you can actually see? I'm going to go with this. Or maybe, you know what? Let's get it a little closer. Let's get it a little closer to the table. Why should I torture you? Here we go. And we'll go like this. Sorry about uh, the bounciness. You won't see my face, but that's fine. That's fine for now. Okay, so hopefully that's a little closer. Man, I drew this one tiny. I need to think about a solution for these kinds of instances of just, you know, smaller sketches. But in any case, so I'm going to do, um, let's bring it over here. So I'm going to just start with a yellow. And I'm going to start with a yellow I dislike. Let's get started with this lemony yellow, which you can't see now, obviously. So let me do this. There we go. And let me do this. Let's move this one aside. Okay, the setup is going to be terrible for this one. You'll have to forgive me. And then hopefully in the future we'll improve it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to use this terrible uh, lemony yellow. And let's just start building it up, seeing what we get. So a bit of yellow. And again, we're not going for anything realistic here, really. Now look at the... Um, outline of the avocado. It's a little darker. So instead of bringing in a darker version of that, why don't I just use a little bit of blue? Because the blue is naturally darker and then just kind of let it mix into that, you see? Now I personally hate lemon yellow. So why did I use it? Why did I use this yellow when I hate it? But in any case, the left section is a little darker. So here we go. And then let's add a bit of red there. And let's use this happy red that I actually like. Like this. See? Like that. I'm just kind of letting the paints mix on the paper. And whatever I get, I'm going to love. Okay, so here we go. Remember, be aware of your edges. Things dry rather fast. So you want to keep them moving. Now, I'm not going to skip the pit. I'm going to actually paint over that as well. I'll just avoid the highlight. So let me, let's me let just choose a random. You know what? Let's choose the same colors. Let's stick with what I've got. So we have a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, and then a bit of red here. And if we want to keep it alive, we're going to spray a bit of water on it. I'm not sure about the quality because the quality feels lower than the last time. So I'll have to figure it out. So my apologies about that. Like the actual video quality. I don't know why that is. Um, let's get this nice shadow here. And quickly, let's get the pit in. It's already starting to dry, so we're in trouble, but that's fine. I'm going to skip that highlight in the middle like that. Now I have a tendency and a lot of people do to make the highlights much bigger. So I'm going to try and avoid it here. Now look at the shadow here, the cast shadow. I'm turning it bluer. You see? I'm going to grab some blue, inject it around here like that. Here we go. Now let's blur that highlight, blend, soften that edge like that. You see? Got back with some water, and here we go. So that's a nice little fun avocado for you. Now, very often you'll have the weird experience of liking it now, and then you're going to go, oh, I'm going to add a darker wash on top of it to, you know, really darken some shadows and stuff like that, and then you hate it afterwards. So a word of warning. If you like something, you can sometimes kind of leave it as it is. Let me try and finish this one wet and wet just in one go, okay? So while it's still wet, I can do a lot of things. I can darken this area here. Um, I don't know why I hate lemon yellow Joe blogs. I don't know. It's like no offense to people who like it. 
I just don't like the way it looks sometimes. It's hard to explain, but I, I never really liked it. But you see, that's, in my opinion, way more interesting than just painting an avocado that's flat green or with very repetitive colors. Now, it's fine if after a while you do start mixing uh, colors on the palette and using this pre-made color that you have, but at least for the start, I love doing it this way. And hopefully you can see the merit of this. Now, let me try something real quick. I'm going to snap a photo. I want you to see this really high quality, okay? So I'm going to snap a photo and bring it onto the video and then maybe we can talk about it or something like that. I don't know if it'll make things clearer, but we're going to try. We have Rob, Rob Kiss Gamer from Latvia. Hey, we have Aysen Mandaki from, or Mandachi? Mandaki, I believe, from Istanbul. Uh, let me bring over this photo I just got. And this is how the live streams are going to be. I'm going to do something, then we're going to share it live. I like this kind of a thing. So let's add a photo here, image. And I'm going to go avocado. I'm going to get it. Sorry, I know I'm obstructing. I do want you to see a higher quality of it fresh. Okay. So let's bring that here. Oh, yeah, that's huge. <laughs> and it also rotated it, which I didn't want, but that's fine. Whatever. So now you get a bit of a better look. I guess at the colors and a bit of a higher quality. I just like to show that if possible. So hopefully you like this one. Uh, just a very quick one. Um, but look at the colors. To me, that's way more interesting than just using one flat green or multiple. Like, look at that. This one. Sorry, I'm gonna move move this aside. This one here. You see. This, it's just too much of the same. For me, what's missing here really is a bit of a red, a bit of a yellow, some kind of warmth to tie it all together. I hope that makes sense. Let me get rid of this one. Uh, and I can just see if you say anything interesting and then we'll continue with the next one. And for the next one, I'll probably just, I'll just save us the trouble and, and uh, draw it, sketch it larger so we can actually see things. Um, Cassandra Hill says, uh, I think your video on how you do greens was one of the first I came across. And I've been watching you ever since. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Uh, this video was quite popular. Um, let me organize this a bit. Uh, it is one of my uh, most viewed videos. So I wouldn't be surprised if quite a lot of people have gotten to the channel from it. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, I was quite shocked when I published it that it did so well. Um, usually it's the videos you don't plan much for uh, that work out the best. I don't know why that is, but that's a very common experience I have. Uh, specifically the videos, sorry, come on, focus, work with me, perfect. Uh, it's usually the videos that you don't put as much effort into that go that work really well and get a lot of views. So that's life, that's YouTube for you. Um, da -da -da. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, Robin J, following along from Albuquerque, where I forgot to uh, to take a left. Uh, I don't know what that means, but Albuquerque, I like breaking bed, so uh, that was in Albuquerque, right? Uh, um, I think it was. Uh, Justin Mesa, hello from Philippines. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, Joe Blows, yes, I mentioned why I hate lemon. I don't know why. Uh, video looks great. Maybe it's my fancy schmancy internet connection. Korean, I cannot speak and read. Sorry about that. Um, this is called press paper, Mary C. Uh, maybe you can see some of the texture here. Uh, I think you can see some of it, but if not, I'm gonna show you right here. So yeah, obviously my camera is not good enough, but uh, it is. Uh, maybe if I hold it like, you can see some of the texture here. Uh, so yeah, cold press, I almost always use cold press. I barely have hot press paper ever. Um, the different colors make the avocado look more real and organic. Yeah, indeed. That highlight was <laughs> instantly good, thank you. What do you love most about watercolor? The flow, this is why I love watercolor, it's just the flow. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's move on to the next one. Now I think we're gonna do, um, not this one, this one's nice, I'm gonna save it for later. Uh, what time is it, 4.30, that's good. Uh, we're gonna do this one, I think. So the melon, because it cuts in such a funny way, I actually wanna do that. now. This is a bit of a complex uh, drawing, so I'm gonna try and narrate it as best as I can. Uh, we'll see how that goes, okay? So, 
it's actually pointing towards this direction. Can you see? The, the melon is tilted that way. So let me drop a line here. I'm going to show you how I approach drawing this thing. Now, the temptation is to just start painting it as you see it. But that's the difference between, I guess, in a way, working more professionally. Now, I'm fine with like work however way that works for you. But if you do want to get a good result, very often a couple of guidelines are necessary. So this goes that way. Now, the shape of the roundedness is the, the, the longest axis is going to be perpendicular to that. And let me explain this once again because it's a bit complex. So look at my water bottle. It can stand up straight like this. It can be tilted at an angle. It can move like this, like that. Now the long axis is obviously, well, this is the longest axis that runs through that. That's what I drew here. The one perpendicular to that is going to dictate the shape of the ellipse, okay? It's, I don't know these things good and well enough to explain it really on a high level, but hopefully that's still clear. So we got the tilt of the melon. Perpendicular to that is the long axis of the oval representing its cut shape. So let's try and put that in. So I'm gonna go a little lighter as I get started and see if I, if that's even the right shape. So it looks about right, you see? And that's how you get the oval to be the right angle because very often you'll go too much this way or too much that way. A tendency a lot of people have is actually flattening it to the horizon. So very often I'll see people drawing it like this, perfectly horizontal. Now you don't want that, you want that tilt, okay? Um, just to get things a little more accurately. So let's see here. Now this is where it does get a little complex. Now my oval isn't perfect, but it, it will do. If you're not sure about your ovals, let me show you a trick. You just rotate it upside down and then whoops, all of my errors come to light. So let me try correcting some of them with a few darker lines. And then I'm going to try cleaning it up a bit. Okay. So I think this is a little better. Let's get rid of some of the excessive lines because we do have quite a lot of details to add here. I hope Ruth is okay. She's just kind of chilling. Um, I don't know why she doesn't want to sit with me here. I'm a bit insulted. Now, <laughs> the next step is to set up the, the bottom part. Uh, now, here's a good way of doing it. Simply measure the length here and see how much, how it compares to this one. So for me, if I measure, it's about one and a third. This is about, let's see again. Okay, this is about a half of this length, about a half, maybe a little longer than a half. So if this is a half, I'm gonna do that same distance and a bit more, right around here. That's gonna be the bottom, okay? And try getting this shape to look good as much as possible. See? I actually wanted to do live on just drawing, so this is a, a good um, kind of uh, attempt at that, just partially. Now, because of the tilt of the camera, you don't see the shape accurately. Here it is accurately. Okay, I was a little more accurate than you can see. I hope it makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to address them. Uh, hello from Montreal. Eva Dosti says, um, what kind of pine, core, pine cone your favorite? I don't know what a pine cone is. I'm not sure at least. Um, Jaya says video isn't clear. Hopefully it will improve. Garden Girl 16, so great as always from Maryland, US. Marjorie Johnson, I've been watching since I found this channel because I came from realistic oil painting and wanted to give up my controlling ways. Yeah, I, a lot of people have that experience of being too controlling in uh, oils. Now, I'm going to just check on Ruth, see that she's just chilling and enjoying yourself. I'm going to be back in a moment. Yeah, she gave me the look. She was like, why did you wake me up? So she's fine. I don't know. Sometimes if she's quiet, I want to check in, make sure that she's uh, okay. So now is the hard part. We have this crazy pattern here. Now, we do have this empty area in the middle. So let me set that up. It's basically the same 
kind of oval only inside. Now here's a good way of working and getting that zigzag pattern. We do see it on the outside. So let's establish that following this line. So we have, we have it's very strange, but I'm gonna try. You see this pattern? This is zigzaggy pattern. It's not identical. It actually changes as it moves away from us and towards uh, the roundedness of the shape. But I'm gonna try getting it as best as I can. So kind of like that. And obviously as it gets to the edge, it gets a little, it basically changes. So let's, let's get Let's get the pattern here as well on the other side. And let's kind of wing it and then I'll show you how I connect it to uh, this side here. Kind of like this, you see? Okay, now, all of these go towards the center, but here's the trick, they, they actually don't go towards the center, they're at a bit of a, a diagonal. So I can't just go and connect them to the center. So let's do that. And if this is boring for some, I, I apologize about that. I know not everyone's into drawing really, but let's get started with one and see how it goes. So this one goes at this angle. And then this one goes at a bit of an angle like that. Now here's the trick for you. This angle, recreate it here. Bam, you closed it off. See, that's all there is to it. Same goes here. Going like that, same angle, bam. And we're just gonna continue moving on like that. Now you see some of them turn at different angles. So you want to get get those captured those correctly. Like this one doesn't go as diagonally. It actually connects here. And then we have another one that connects there and another one that connects this edge to the middle. Uh, it's a very cool way of cutting. Uh, I actually learned how to cut a kiwi uh, that way. Is that like, is that how you say kiwi, the fruit, the green fruit? Because I know Australian people are also, or New Zealand people are kiwi. I'm never sure about that. So here we go, look at this side here. What happens here is that this diagonal line towards the center obstructs the other side of this triangle. I hope that makes sense. I hope uh, you, you understand what I mean. It's a little complex. You see this connects here. Basically every point here you have to connect. So this point, connect it. Uh, this point, connect. This point, connect. And then it connects to a same pattern around here. Now, this is important because the light and shadow is gonna be affected by it. If light comes from the top right corner in this example, I believe, because you do see a strong cast shadow to the left, right around here, uh, then these areas, this, these sides are gonna be in the shadow while these sides are gonna be in the light, okay? I hope that makes sense. Uh, now, the light isn't too strong, but let's maybe make it stronger to give off a more dramatic impression. So. We got it. Now let me erase some of the uh, unnecessary lines just to get the impression a little clearer. And then I'm gonna zoom in a bit and you'll see. Uh, I hope this, uh, you see these lines here, this line, we don't need it anymore. It's a part of the peel. So let me show you, you see, I'm just removing that. It was a guideline to get the shape, okay? Let me know what you think of this kind of a topic. I know it's a bit complex. Um, I'm good enough to understand how to do it, but not always good enough to explain it in detail. So let me know if you have any questions and uh, or if you gained something out of this. So a bonus drawing lesson here. Uh, let's see, I've been drawing a lot, a lot for the manga, a lot. Uh, it's been really fun. I may show you some of the sketches later, the preparatory sketches. Now you see now you can go over some of these lines, get them stronger just so that you see them after you place the paint in. Uh, you don't have to, but you know. I've gotten so used to holding the pencil that way that I have actually really good control at it. Now, the middle is a mumbo jumbo. Look at the middle there. Do you care what's there? Do you actually want to portray it? I don't, so I'm just gonna go like a couple of shapes, that's it. Because if you start recreating it, there's nothing there. This was important because it's a uh, it's a human-made shape. There's actually importance to it. This, not so much, okay? Let's see what you're saying here. Um, Gabramovic, it's a pleasure watching you draw. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, awesome, Anzi, lovely result. Thank you. 
Um, Angshu Roy, which artist has inspired you the most? Well, tons of them. Tons of them. I did get started my, in my watercolor journey with the Z-Man, Joseph Zbukvich, and Alvaro Castaney. Uh, I love these artists. Uh, AA says, I love it, from Buenos Aires. Julie M says, wow, great. Stephanie Coral, I need this perspective help. Thank you. How funny on Ruth's process. Um, it's amazing. I couldn't go to art school, but I desperately want to learn painting and sketching. Where should I start? With the fundamentals. Start with drawing, sketching, measuring things accurately, gesture, proportions. Check out Proko's YouTube channel. It's great for the basics. And I really recommend if you really want to get to a very, very high level and a very professional feel to your work, which not everyone wants, and that's perfectly fine, start with the fundamentals, always. Um, Rita Prahl, thank you for this. This is great. Julianne, I love your pencil. Yeah, so I finally got the pencil extender. Uh, this, You see this? It actually ends here, the, the actual pencil. Let me show you here. Wait, here we go. It's tiny. It's a tiny little pencil because I want to make the most out of it. Uh, Elson Conway, wow, excellent drawing skills. I would struggle with all these zigzags. Definitely useful to see you do this. Again, it's all about the stages and thought. Go ahead with the angle, the tilt, then get the oval, then get these zigzaggy shapes. Okay, that's what it's all about. It's stages. And if, if you sat down next to me here and you would do the same thing, you'll get a good result because you're doing it step by step. Okay? Uh, so it's nothing impossible, it's just really 166 people, by the way, thank you so much. That's the most people we had here, so thank you so, so much. Um, so yeah, it's just the stages. Go through them, you will get it. Uh, and, and one more note, if your hand... So I experienced this when my vision kind of surpassed my hand and drawing skills. I would be good enough to see my mistakes, but I wouldn't be able to draw. For example, I can't draw a perfect oval, but I, I can tell it's not perfect. That's really that can be really discouraging. Take it easy. That's all I have to say because your hand will catch up, okay? And then it will surpass your eyes and you'll draw things that are inaccurate but you won't be able to see. And then after a while you'll understand that they're inaccurate. It's going to annoy you, but trust me, it's a process. It's it's a kind of a yo-yo thing. Uh, Blanca Rodriguez, thank you Liron. Thank you Blanca. Uh, Zine Kalsanga, I love the drawing instructions, thanks for the bonus. Cassandra Hill, I like your explanation. It's helpful to hear how you approach difficult subject. Uh, Natalie Kelly, you are explaining the process very clearly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Victoria Gomez, do you watch anime? Yes, I do. I watch One Piece, I watch a bunch of others. JSA Drawing, message retracted. I don't know why, but send it again. Now let's see if you can get it in here. Uh, Newton Aguiar, Aguiar Jr., here in Brazil, 47 years old, making architecture cool um i love brazil brazil is so beautiful um mob assassin message retracted sorry about that and watercolor class right now uh what was that name again please i guess that's proco i'm gonna write every every live stream i write it so i'm gonna write it proco proco's channel check it out it's really really good um i should start getting commissions from the guy uh, Elizabeth Byers, uh, also great stuff at Art Pro and Paul Priestley and Mark Rilly. Yes, I love Mark Rilly. I grew up on Mark Rilly. I watched so many of his videos. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, let's get to painting this. Now, here's another trick for you. When you look at the melon, what do you actually see? If I had to, like, to force you to see only a few shapes... Don't go complex. A lot of people have the tendency, same as the drawing stage, to go very complex. Let me make myself larger so that you listen. So that you listen to me. <laughs> when we look at this, we have a tendency to say, oh, there's a bunch of stuff here, like all of the shadows on the left sides uh, of the zigzag pattern and, and all of this big mess in the middle. No, no, no. Let's take it easy. We have this entire shape, okay? For the first wash, let's take it very easy and one step at a time. Unlike the avocado that I kind of rendered immediately, here let's do a bit of a different approach. I'm going to limit you to maybe two colors and values. So what do we have here? What I see personally is this big orange thing in the middle. And let me make myself smaller again. You need to see me now. We have this thing in the middle. We have this. And we have the shadow. And that's about it. We don't need much. We can add, by the way, the other melons next to it if we want to just have a few more details there uh, but basically <clears throat> that's everything I see so let's go at it this way let's paint just these few shapes now I'm going to turn off the air condition because it's getting cold here 
and I don't need it. Um, so let's paint just these few shapes. And how are we going to do that? Very easily, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So I'm going to get started with the biggest shape and then do the other one kind of wet and wet. So let's mix a bit of a yellow here. Now I'm thinking, should I move? Let's do this. Let's do this thing here. I'm going to move this because I want you to see everything as much as I can. I don't know why that doesn't play a role there. Obstructing my palette. So I'm going to move it aside like that. And here we go. So I'm going to mix a yellow. We're going to get started with a yellow. I love warm yellows. Again, as I mentioned, my personal take. Let's add a bit of that orange in there just to warm it up a little. Now this is nice. So I'm just going to go for it. See? Nothing to it really. Just make sure you get the shape right. And you don't even have to. Let's go outside the shape here. Let's get this nice little springy effect here. Now I'm going to bring, now this is the same, so let's bring something a little different. So pure yellow onto the paper, just that yellow. See here? Have fun with it. Spread it out a bit so that we have a background, kind of like Udes Corel likes doing. Amazing painter, paints people mostly, he likes to spread out the paint. Kind of like this, giving it a background is nice. This is still wet, so we don't have anything to worry about. Now, while it's still wet, let's get that orange in the middle. So I'm going to mix a bit of orange here with my yellow, with my orange and red. I am using a bit of orange. I'm fine with that. And let's put it in the middle. See? Now we get this nice orange in the middle. Now here's something I don't think I ever explain. If I touch and let go, it's going to spread out. But if I move, it's going to spread out only where I leave it. Okay, that's really important. So if you want to have the shape stop here, you move. You keep moving, keep moving, and then you lift it here. Okay, just a quick tip. Now, as we progress, I'm going to make this paint thicker. So more paint. And let's place it around here. So now we're pretty much done with the center. Let's do the lower half. Now, this is a little darker. I'm going to add a bit of blue to the mix. Purpley blue. Now let's just do it. Now here's an important note. Don't get too close to the edge because it's going to bleed into the lighter section. Okay. Now I'm fine with the light bleeding into the dark because I can always darken it. But I'm not fine with the dark bleeding into the light. Now this is a little too cool and too blue. So let me add some orange. Because what we actually have here is a dark brown. Okay. You can go a little blue for the color harmony, for the temperature difference and contrast but it's actually a very warm color and it's actually quite light on the right. So let me do this more yellow, more orange. And let's see how light we can get away with it being here on the right side. See like that. Um, so I don't have any moderators because I see someone's being uh, not so nice. I can kick per people off, so um, if you're not nice to others, I will uh, kick you out, unfortunately. And if anyone wants to be a moderator, let's get the clown out of here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got rid of Mr. Cortez. So here's the thing. I can't really deal with these things as I paint. Um... So you'll have to help me <laughs> um, and let me know when these things happen. Oh, good. Deleted all of their messages. Perfect. Uh, so I can't really deal with these things. So uh, it's good that you let me know. Uh, I will uh, promote some people to be moderators if you want. I know that it is a possibility to make someone a moderator. Now I have to work. Okay. So I'm going to focus on that for a moment. Then we'll talk about the incident. But here we go. You see a bit of blue. This cries for a bit of coolness to it. And that's that's usually how I do it. Like I had to put a bit of blue here. There we go. Because again, go with what you see. But I do think it's interesting to put a bit of coolness where there is too much warmth or only warmth. Okay, so here we go. A bit of blue here. Like that. There we go. Now let's soften this up a little bit, help it move. 
just so that the painting breathes. I mean, we're going for a looser look here anyway. Um, let's get a bit of yellow. While I'm at it, I like to sometimes just connect things. So this is a light yellow, and then I'm going to connect it to a bit of a darker shape. And then ultimately to a shadow. Now, this is instinctive. Again, I'm, I can't explain exactly what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. Um, it's just a sense you get with time, and, and it's not the best way of doing it. It's just our way of doing it, okay? So don't worry about that too much if you see me mixing random paints or doing something strange, okay? It's kind of what I'm feeling at the moment, and maybe it has a use, maybe it doesn't. Uh, this area is really dark. It's what's called occlusion shadow because not a lot of light can reach there. Um, so I do want to push it to be just a tad bit darker, okay? With this mostly blue, but a bit of red mix. So it's dark here. It's dark here. It's dark here. Here we go. Here we go, like that. Okay, I think now we can let it dry. So let me show you. Very nice pattern. And even though I said work away from the border, you see some of the shadow crept into the light. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. We're going to make it look sharper with the next wash. Okay, uh, so let's put it like this. Let's see what you're saying in the chat. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. Now is the time to ask uh, questions, by the way. Uh, if you have any, let's serious troll. Uh, Andrea Harutunian, love your uh, style and videos from St. Petersburg, uh, Florida. Thank you so much, Andrea. I really appreciate it. Victoria Gomez, I love your, I love your work. Can you tell me how to draw... Um, is that anime hands? Well, if it is anime hands, let me give you a lesson about stylization. <laughs> That's the boring thing that everyone has to say. If you want to learn how to paint something stylized, simplified, you have to go to the source and learn how to actually draw real hands. There's no way around it. You can go directly for simplification and stylization. It's just not going to be as good. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I think at least. Learn the structure of the hand, like the general shape, the proportions. For example, that this length is kind of similar to this length. See right here and there. Uh, the knuckles of the fingers have this interesting pattern to them that they get a little smaller the further you go from the base. The thumb obviously is different. Learn this uh, very basic anatomy, then try stylizing. I hope that makes sense, and I hope that was the question. Uh, Leah's Kitchen. Hey, Tiberius checking in. That's cool. Jordan Libby. Hello from Taiwan. Thank you for your channel and videos. Thank you so much, Jordan. I'm happy that you ignored Mr. Cortez, who was not so nice to you. Uh, thank you for this lesson. Wish you the best. Thank you, Tulipan. Um, Kimberly Hilton Studio. Liron, I'm not a fan of lemon yellow either. What color do you recommend instead as a substitute when you need a light yellow? I just go with new gamboge or... Uh, even yellow ochre sometimes can be a good replacement. It's a little more muted, um, but it can work pretty well. Uh, so that's what I would say. Da -da -da -da. Shubham Aswal. Hello, Liron. Hey, my friend. How are you? I hope everything is well. Cyan, can you name the person again that you mentioned, the one who loves to spread colors? Um, who was that? The person who likes to spread colors. I'm not sure who we're talking about. I'm sorry about that. Let me know. Uh, Jordan Libby, I'm always afraid to be so free with putting colors outside the lines. A big step of watercolor for me that I haven't been able to take. Thank you for explanation. So, um, Jordan Libby, is it uh, Jordan or Libby? I believe it's Libby. What you really want to do is think about the purpose of the painting. So, right now I'm working on this painting. What's my purpose? My purpose with it is to demonstrate the process to you. It's to um, uh, have a, a process that's entertaining. It's to get a fun result. So look at all of these goals. Now your goal may be different. My goal is to get an accurate representation of the scene. Fine, go with that. If that's your goal, go with that and work slower and work inside the lines. But if you've decided that the goal of a certain given painting is to let go, to enjoy the process and all of that, allow yourself to do that. Okay, it's just about a decision you make. Um, and a lot of people don't think about why they paint. And it's very natural. I don't think about why I paint most of the time. But sometimes you can stop and think to yourself, why am I doing this? Is this practice perfect that I don't care if I fail? It's just practice. No one's going to see it. Okay. Um, once you get that freedom to let go and be looser, 
uh, a big thing happens where your sketches become beautiful as well because people can sense the confidence. Now, honestly, I, doing this, I was focused, but I could have been much more focused. I could have worked without the cameras, without you, without talking, and still the result looks good. And that's just purely due to the confidence and some of the understanding of technique. So being able to let go that way and really enjoy it is a big part of uh, getting a good result. And I know this experience, you see someone working in their sketchbook and it's like, oh, it's just a quick sketch I did and it looks perfect. And you think to yourself, I wish my quick sketches would look like this. And maybe you're, I, I had the same feeling where you're jealous of the person and you feel like, what, they're crazy. Is that a quick sketch? If they do this as a quick sketch, when I try hard, I don't get the same result. Like, what gives? A lot of it has to do with just knowing your purpose for painting and being able to let go like that. And this is why I did the, the frustration-free watercolor course, because so many people have asked me about this issue. Letting go, I can't, I'm stuck between the lines. I came from oil painting, and now I'm just stuck doing uh, the same technique with watercolor, and I want to let go. So I did this course just for that. And the link is always in the description box below. If you want to get it, I would highly appreciate it. A lot of people ask me, is it lifetime access? Is it a time limit? No time limit. You buy it, one-time payment, 29 bucks. You get it for life. And you, you can always log in. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can't currently download the videos, I believe, but I will, if enough people want it, I will allow it in the future. But you basically get access to our website. You can always log in. You can learn whenever you want, how much you want. It's just an issue that so many people have. So uh, it was really important for me to address it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Joaquin Elizalda. Hi, an Argentinian living in Italy here. Just getting started with watercolor. My, my avocado looks like a rainbow. <laughs> That's fine. That's a step in the right direction. Uh, Argentina is so beautiful. Like I visited Argentina uh, in my South America travels. Visited the entire like coast area and all villages in the south and just Buenos Aires and a bunch of places. Man, it was so nice. Like, I have so, such fond memories from uh, small places like, uh, was it Pucon? I believe there's a small village, Pucon. Um, uh, I believe that's in, in Argentina, not in Chile, because sometimes I confuse places between the two, but uh, it's just so beautiful. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Marina uh, Borrell says I can moderate. So uh, let's see, I'm going to leave the moderation work for now. I won't give anyone that, like, there's the wrench. Um, let's see how it goes. If we'll need it in the future, um, I don't want really people to, I want people to focus and enjoy their lives for now, and this barely happens, so let's let's wait with the moderation, but in the future, if I see we need it, I'll definitely um, have that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll add you, and I'll allow you to moderate. In the meantime, if you catch someone being a troll, just let me know, and I'll go block. Um, honestly, I don't care. Like comments, you can leave pretty much whatever it is as long as it's not bugging other people. Like I don't care if people leave crap on the video as long as it's not links or spam. Like whatever, you can't catch everything. But but for the live, it's kind of annoying. So you know, um, da -da -da -da. explanation very clear. Thanks, thank you, Mary. Brett says I'll mod if you want me. Uh, <laughs> if you want to try. Okay, thank you. I'll remember for next time. Uh, thank you so much, Brett and. Um, and Marina, everyone who offered it, maybe we'll do that. Uh, which oranges are you using? Sorry if you already mentioned it. Uh, which orange? Sorry, uh, Jay Anderson asks. So, to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure what orange that is. Uh, it's what I have here on the Paul Rubens palette. And as I mentioned, I don't recall having the names in English. Just in, um, what was it? Uh, Korean or Chinese? I don't remember. So, I, I apologize for that. Um... I may have it somewhere here, you know what? Let me see, because maybe I'm mistaken and I actually have the names in English and I don't remember. I think I taped it here. Let me check. Oh, yeah. So, you know what? I actually have it. So I put my pencils in the box that this came in. So, I have to show you. So, this is the box for this pink palette. Let me show you. It's a pink palette. Well, you can't see on this side, but I'll show you later. But... It came in this box and there's actually, it was my bad. Actually, I do have the names here, so let me show you. Here are all the names. And the person who said they came in English as well, you are right. You were right. I just remembered I had the stickers. Um, so here we go. So let's find it. Uh, I, I taped it the exact same order. So this is mm, Indian yellow? No, it's not Indian yellow. 
Cadmium red light. That doesn't make sense at all. Huh. But it looks like it's that. It looks like it's cadmium red light. You can probably barely read this, so sorry about that. Maybe here you'll be able to read this. But oh, There we go. Um, that's strange. So follow me here. Let me show you. Let's take a brief break. Uh, so this is the permanent lemon yellow. This is the cadmium yellow medium. This is the Indian yellow, which I obviously ran out of because I love. That's another alternative to lemon yellow for me. And then it just says cadmium red light. So it's cadmium red light by Paul Rubens. That's the answer. You got it. Uh, we have scarlet here. We have matter red. We have violet. We have permanent violet, cobalt blue, French ultramarine, sky blue. What's sky blue? I don't know. Sea blue. Pers uh, Prussian blue, paints gray, yellow green, tree green, hooker's green, um, emerald green, yellow ochre. But okay, so we have everything here. Uh, it's funny, I did review this palette and I believe I've shown you these. I just forgot, so my bad. My bad for saying they didn't come in English. So that's your answer once again. Cadmium red light. That's the orange. It's not even an orange, turns out. But it's kind of like Cadmium Orange by Daniel Smith, I would say. I wouldn't get too caught up on the exact color. Um, let's see. Uh, Elizabeth Byers. Lerona, I would volunteer to do moderation. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, Ucha Mormo. Thank you for the online class. I'm learning. Nicole Lam. I'm watching this <laughs> in class. <laughs> okay, so if you don't pay attention to the class, I hope you can afford it. Uh, Liron, you're great. I've learned so much. Thank you so much, Josephine. Kimberly Hilton Studio. Liron, can you do a future live on one point and two point perspective? Yes, I will. I'm going to write it down right now um, so that I don't forget. One point perspective, two point perspective. Notes. Here are my notes <laughs> for today. I always find the weirdest, crappiest pieces of paper to write my notes on. Um, so, uh, Bikash Kumar Behara says, Hey, Liron, good to see you, man. Dab. <laughs> uh, Kimberly Hilton Studio. Liron, I love your teaching style. Thank you so much. Uh, Kimberly, JSA Drawing. I like your paintings. They are epic. Thank you so much. I, I think JSA Drawing, your message was retracted earlier. Sorry about that. Uh, NB here from E4. Uh, what's E4? I'm not sure. John Watercolors, thanks, Leron. We'll have to go now. We'll catch up with you later. Will do. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, Eva Dusty, do you ever use a water mister? Yes, I have, and I've shown it in the beginning. I use this to wet the, the paints in the palette again, to reawaken them. I use it to preserve the wetness here. The, the one thing I love about painting small is that you don't need it because you don't have enough you don't have too big of a room to play around with things and, and to worry too much about things drying so it, it actually i don't need it as much for smaller <coughs> smaller paintings so yeah but i do use it all the time for larger pieces uh i can't read that i think that's turkish wow well, and uh, no i can't read that sorry galchek is your paper flat or at an angle it is at an angle ruth here is the angle you see this i just put it like that so the angle is about it's really small it's that kind of an angle so maybe 10 degrees what what bye what what we'll have to bear with it sorry if you can hear it anyway. uh but it is it uh, yelena aldin or jelena i think that's yelena wow master great thank you so much what what bye Yumna Mariam, it's so nice, thank you. Stephanie Corell, uh, yes, I do keep it at a slight angle. Thank you, Stephanie, for letting uh, Gail know. Uh, it's very useful, thank you. Avocado Loco, hello, wow, this is an avocado, cool. Yeah, I said I'll do an avocado soon. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, can you tell me how to draw animal hands? Okay, Victoria, um, you have to open up references and actually study them. That's the only way of learning. Like, look at this, the finger, how it's placed now. That's something you have to learn. Like, let me draw it right here for you. That's something you have to learn. <laughs> I can't even draw it because of that. Let's, let me try. Let's, let's do this fun game where I play with, well, where I, I play, where I draw with one hand. So you see, this is the side of the hand. I don't know why I'm doing this. This is ridiculous, but let's do it. It's fun like that 
and then we get this shape here so <laughs> and this goes like this this I can do from memory so the reason I was able to do this strange uh, sketch of my hand is because I do understand how the fingers are built um, this goes let me see yeah okay I'm missing another one here like that you see so you have to learn the anatomy of the things you want to draw if you want to get a very accurate result otherwise I would say if you just want to you know do it at a fun kind of leisurely pace Here's what you can do. Open up a bunch of pictures of the thing you want to learn and just go for it. And sketch it many times. Try measuring. Like, figure out, is this distance the same as this distance? The width compared to the height. All of these things, you have to measure them out. If you don't know them, you have to measure them. Take your time. Work slowly. That's the biggest advice I can give you. Just open up reference photos. Lots of references. I, don't, I can't do a lot from imagination. I, I'm starting to develop the ability, but not a lot. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. What about Hansa Yellow Light instead of Lemon Yellow? Hansa Yellow Light is a little better. I still don't like it as much. Uh, wow, oh my god. Uh, question mark says it. I guess that's a compliment, so thank you. Barb White, coloring the books taught me I must stay in the line. In the lines. Took forever to know the limits. That limits us so much. Still learning and you're a fantastic teacher. Thank you, Barb. Yes, that's just... It's just useless to keep staying in, in the lines, you know. Just... Do whatever works for the painting you're working on at the moment. If you do want to stay in the lines, lines that's fine. Go for it. Cyan. Um, uh, Rishab, sorry. What's your say on abstract and modern art? I guess it's it's just a different thing. So a lot of people say I could paint it, but they don't paint it. So I guess it takes a bit of a different set of skills. I don't want to judge it too harshly. Uh, but sometimes I just... After seeing a lot of modern art, sometimes I get bored. I, I've experienced this in the MoMA in New York which I would obviously love to go back to because now you can travel and it would be an, a nice breath of fresh air. I had a good time in, in MoMA and other museums, but just after a while, it, it gets me tired. Well, I guess even like other types of art do, so I don't know. Cyan Petnik, you talked about some artists who paints mostly people. Oh, yeah, Odes Korea. Sorry about that, my friend. Here, I'm going to write it down in the chat. The artist I talked about is Udes Korea. He's great. I did a, I think it's actually Korea. Uh, I did an episode of Painting Masters on him. He's excellent. He's uh, Portuguese, I believe. Um, so, yeah, that's the artist. Cyan, my friend. Sorry, it took me a, a moment to understand. Uh, Lugin de Lozier. Hello from Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania. You're the best. I love your art and wisdom. Thank you so much. Helen Gillis. Practice, practice. Yes. Avocado Loco. Um, I love just a quick sketch. Just a quick sketch I did here. Um... Can you lift out highlights for the seeds with these colors, or did they stain too much? Um, actually, I don't know if we'll even need highlights. The seeds aren't as uh, as li as light as you'd think. I could, I think, I could lift highlights out of this, and I could use opaque paint. Um, so that hopefully that answers it for you. Uh, Presley de Costa, hi, Jennifer Matos, hello from Peru. Very useful. Thanks. What kind of paper is better? I like Saunders Waterford and Arsh. This is Arsh. I love Arsh. Um, Alison Conway, I got the frustration free watercolor course, great value for money and excellent info that you can revisit time and time again. Great recommended. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Alison. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's basically how I make my living, the courses and the books, so anyone who gets them, you help me continue doing what I'm doing right now. Um, and this year, thankfully, has, has been okay. There, there's been a slight decrease for pretty much probably everyone, uh, just because of, uh, of, you know, people's finances are a little tighter. Uh, but I actually, I honestly, I didn't get hit as hard at all. So thank you so much for that. And and I had months of increased course sales, increased book sales because people are at home. Uh, so thank you to anyone who got my courses and books. Um, I really appreciate it. The real Andre B. Alpedes, do you watch or play Persona? The closest I played was Octopath Traveler. I loved Octopath Traveler. I heard of Persona and I should try it. I, I know I should because... Uh, it's my genre. I really enjoy these uh, RPGs, the simpler ones more, but I don't think Persona is that complex, right? The system is pretty simplified. I'd love to paint to play uh, Persona. I just barely have time to to play any video games. Cindy Talbot, I hope you visit the east coast of Canada sometime. Wow, I wish. It's, it's well, the only place I was in Canada was like the the Niagara Falls. <laughs> Uh, Jay Anderson, thank you. You got it. The real Andre B. Please visit the Philippines after quarantine. We actually had plans to visit the Philippines, hopefully in the future. Uh, Marina Borwell, what colors do you run out of most? French ultramarine, 
French ultramarine, French ultramarine. I keep running out of French ultramarine all the time. That's the one color. Uh, sometimes thalo blue as well, but French ultramarine, I keep needing. I always need to buy more. Let me just show you. Um, I'm going to show you all of my blue tubes. Uh, I think I threw away a lot of them, but like if I have to choose a tube that I have the most of, like finished, done, it's going to be that. I actually threw out a lot of them, but here we go. There's another one here. Oh, where was it? I think this one too, yeah. I already got four in my hand, by the way. Here's uh, three. Now it's four. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let me show you real quick. Just without even having to think too hard about it, all of them are over. Just to give you an example, this is my Perlin Red. Still got Perlin Red. This is my Hansa Yellow uh, Medium. Still got it. This is Carbazol Violet. Still got a bunch of it. I have this one for like three years now. Um, all sorts of yellows. Still full SA, uh, SAA. This was Shinhan PWC. Didn't even remember I have this one. Cadmium Yellow Deep. Got a bunch of it. Got a bunch of my Pyro Scarlet. But blues, and especially French Ultramarine. This one's actually Thalo Blue. This one's Cobalt Blue, but close enough. Blues. I run out of blues all the time. Because I find that I need them for shading. Uh, by the way, we're going to continue with this in just a few moments. Bear with me. I want to answer some of the questions. Okay. Uh, Luna Angel Rosewood. Ye Ravioli. Don't know what that means, but I love Ravioli. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Charmaine Zoe, uh, Udos Correa. Okay, yeah, that's I corrected myself. Udos Correa, Lori Foster. Thank you for not for not being so exciting. I keep trying to be looser and watching you helps. Okay, um, uh, you should try painting interior. Yeah, I did a few interiors, Gabrimovic. Um, I think you see you saw them. Uh, Bar White. That it's true. I never thought of this. And about so many coloring books. Oh yeah. Uh, Luna Angel Ravioli is so good. Listen, listen, your accent is much better watching from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, USA. Thank you, uh, Kathy. Rude Ruth, indeed. Avocado Mamem. Itamar says it's a really lovely avocado. Thank you so much, Itamar. Marco Hive. Sorry, but I like the avocado much more than the melon. The melon's not done yet, so uh, well, hopefully you'll like that as well. Uh, Necro Hearts. Love your dog. Uh, Liron, not Liston. Oh, okay, okay, Liron. Not Liston. Yeah, that's a common mistake, and you said Luton now. That, that's fine. Uh, Michelle Torres. The oil painting from a YouTuber is better. It's so realistic, but this is good too. Thank you. Tulipan. Where are you from? Israel. Uh, the real Andre. Can you draw a chess set for your next live video? Uh, I'll, I'll put the idea down. I don't know if it's going to be the next one, but uh, chess. I'll, I'll have it at some point. Um, do you have Copics? Yes, I have a few Copics. They're super uh, expensive. I have like six paid 200 shekels for them. That's about 60 bucks, I guess. Uh, uh, do you have doodles? Yes, I do. Oh, this Korean. Let's see. Okay, okay. We're going to go. Okay, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to continue with the painting. I would love to see you paint more interior scenes. Will do. Uh, trouble with shadows. Any tips? Um, don't go too dark. It's easy to go too dark with shadows. Uh, the question by Lola in P36. Um, I have a few videos on shadows. Just search for Liron watercolor shadows. You'll find a few good ones. Um, Sue Evans, Liron. Do you use? Uh, do you ever use tube paints? Yes, always. As you've seen, I have a bunch of tubes here. Um, I use mostly tubes. You should watch Sword Art Online. It's a good anime. I heard about it. I should probably watch it. The book Color and Light by Gurney is great for that, for shadows. Mm, great great recommendation, Felicia. I love uh, James Gurney. I think it's James Gurney, right? Uh, let's see. We have Dave Lowe in the house. Hey, how are you, Dave? Uh, I am keeping well. Okay. Um, so many artists have issues with lemon yellow. I don't know. I thought that's just me with the lemon yellow. Um, Alex, I don't know why. Uh, okay. We let's try addressing some more. Hmm. Michelle Torres, I answered. I said hi. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> I'm trying to read comments. <laughs> um, okay, it takes me some time because I have to answer. So, in any case, let's move on with the process. Um, so, here's the thing here's what I'm looking at right now. In the original photo, this background isn't much darker, but I want to make it darker because look at this beautiful zigzag shape. This is incredible. I want to recreate that. 
So let's do that. Let's just darken some section of the side. Now let's see what we get. Now for this, we can use more blue. So let me just pick up a bunch of blues and you can see in my palette here too, like I'm running out of blues constantly. Uh, so let's just pre-wet some of the blues here. Like that. Now let's create a blue background. It's not gonna be perfectly blue, obviously, because that will be strange. Let's use some of the paints, uh, paints gray as well to darken it. Okay, I don't want it to be too perfect of a blue. Uh, but let's let's go for it and see what we get. So I'm starting a bit farther from the edge just to make sure I don't go over it. When you do this, you want the colors to not be too out of the other harmony of the painting. Now, I don't know why, but I knew that this blue will work and will look nice. But sometimes you won't. You'll have to try and uh, with time you'll... you'll improve in seeing these color harmonies, so to speak. So here's the thing. I think that's good. You see how it made it pop a little? I like that. Now what I'm gonna do is just blend the edges of this shadow and also warm it up a little with maybe some yellow will be good, some red. If I want to warm up a shadow, and again, tip for shadows, grab the color you want to warm it up with and just pour it in and see what happens. It usually uh, it works well if it's still wet. And look at how wet it is. See? See the shine? It's really wet still. Um, now let's blend the edges of this dark shape like so, just a bit. Uh, so we don't get too hard of an edge that's distracting us. And we'll work around the avocado. <laughs> like So we got a nice little zigzaggy shape. Now it's time to establish some of the shadows on the, the melon itself. Okay, uh, This shadow should be darker, but you know what? Let's do it. Let's go for it. Let's darken it just a bit. Again, spontaneity. Sometimes if you see an opportunity, you go for it. Um, I'm going to keep this a mix of red and blue. Let's see what we get here. N not too dark. And then as I move to the right, I'm going to add a bit of yellow as well. Because I want to warm it up closer to the light source. You see this part is a little lighter. Or maybe I'll just blend it out, you know? Maybe I'll use more water for that section. Spread this out a bit. And let's just add some cleaner water to the right section. See, like that. And a bit of yellow right there to the right side, okay? That, keeping it slightly warm. Uh, I think that works. And then we have a sharp shadow here, so let me get that in. Like that. And this is a softer shadow, I guess. But now you start to feel the shape, hopefully. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Now I cannot avoid darkening some of these sections up. Now, sorry if you can't see well. Um, again, the nuances of the colors are a little hard to see on camera sometimes, but... Hopefully you get the gist of what I'm doing. What I want to do is just add this indication for the darkest shadows once again. Uh, so that makes these areas a little lighter. I'm going to use my sprayer just to spread the paint out just a bit like this. I find that it helps the paint move. And we can just kind of let this area go and start working on the middle. Now, honestly, I really like the middle. So I'm wondering what should we do with it? I don't want to go to... Maybe I'll just go for an approach of uh, painting it as I see it. So what I see here is a bunch of darker spots. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint it as I see it. And we'll hope for the best, okay? And then what I'm going to do is pause, address some of the comments, and then we'll finish the live. <clears throat> I'm going to keep this one an hour and a half long. So that means we have about 10 more minutes. Um, because I have a bunch of things to do, unfortunately. So that's that. Now look at how much I'm mixing just to figure out if I have the right um, value color or whatever it is. Now, the beauty here is from the white, the, the lighter gaps. So let me show you. I'm painting this shape, being very careful with the edge, especially, because if it touches this, this is still wet. They're going to merge together. And also stopping here. Why? Because look at that. It actually stops there. 
see like that let me darken the base a little bit like this see and we'll do the same for this one and this lighter gap which i missed here by the way let me fix that let me go ahead and fix that like this see i'm just lifting it back up same goes for this side leave that white gap there get rid of more water from the brush see that's how you create that beautiful separation between the different parts let's add a bit of red just to make this a little more interesting see i always try to vary my mix after a while okay um so this one and i'm kind of you see i have a line here but let's just merge it into one slice so just to make it easier i don't know why should we work harder if it isn't necessary and again I wet the brush I wipe off the water and I'm gonna go like this let's see what you write in the chat as I paint um, do you need to be able to draw well in order to produce a good painting not really because think about it you can trace you can trace the drawing stage and then just paint over it I would not let that stop you if you feel like you really want to paint but your drawing skills aren't where you want them to be please don't let that stop you please just take care of the drawing in whatever way you want trace use the grid method which i've shown you a few times do anything that's necessary to get the paint the the pencil lines correctly use tracing paper i know some people do that that's a thing and that's it don't don't let that stop you now i do think to be more wholesome uh, and if you do want to be able to go through the entire process, yes, you will need to drawing. But definitely not a must and definitely don't let that stop you. Okay, that's that's my two cents on that. Now, left side, look at this bump here. I'm going to show you. This is important. Again, light and shadow, always have them in mind. You see this triangle? It's in the shadow because the light comes from here. This side is hit by more light than this side. So I'm going to shade it right in like so. See? Same goes for this thin strip here. It's in the shadow. Same goes, and let me add some more yellow. Sorry that I can't read the chat really now. I, that's the part where I kind of have to focus. This left side is in the shadow as well. See, like that. Yeah, we're good. Actually, this is in the shadow as well, you see? So I'll make an artificial separation. Essentially, all of this should be shaded, but I'm going to go and stop here. And I'm going to do the same for this one. I'm going to go and then stop here. See? I think it looks really nice. Do the same here. The color I'm using is very strong orange, but that's fine. Let me go with a bit of more red. Now, that it's also quite opaque. You can see that it paints over stuff. So if that's not your thing and you don't like it as much, my apologies. Sometimes I use opaque colors as well. You know, they're, they're transparent, but they're a little more opaque than others. So soften that edge up. You see, that's how I just work my way around it. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I'll put the, the things here in the middle. Uh, let's see what we have here. Pixel, that's nice. A car alarm just went off. <laughs> hope it didn't scare you. Uh, Rivka Winter Cauliflowers. Is that a name for like the bleed that happens? Yes, uh, I think that's what... Uh, Joaquin said it, uh, meant. Um, the cauliflowers are all about the timing. Now, if this is almost dry, but not fully dry, and I'm going to put wet paint into it, it's going to push everything out. Let me show you cauliflowers live, okay? Because you asked about it. So I have this area here. I'm going to put some paint here. We're going to give it a few seconds, and then we'll return with some wetter paint, and you'll see the cauliflowers happening live, okay? Let me expand it a bit. You will already see color flowers, but let me just go like this. Just make it a little bigger so we have something to work with. And you'll see in just a moment color flowers. I have just probably 30 seconds to put things wet in wet here. The moment these 30 seconds go by, I'm going to get color flowers once I put something back here. That's the trick, okay? You don't have enough time. If it went past that 30 minutes, just let it dry fully, then continue. 
That's my tip for cauliflowers. Uh, Gail Check, Liron, I'm enjoying this so much. Thank you for today, and I hope you will be able to continue these sessions. Definitely will. Donna, how are you? Donna Bowman, I, I know you said it before, but wondering what brushes you're using. So, this is an Escoda brush, size 8 Perla. The one I used previously was Escoda Barocco, size 16. This one's Tracy Liebenson's uh, small, soft, white synthetic brush, which I use for the tiny details. Uh, I have this one that I love, uh, a Leonard size 6. I have a uh, silver black velvet, which I love. And I have a Raphael one, which I haven't used in a while. I love this one as well. But the Raphael got the erased from all the painting. And here's another big one that you haven't seen probably before. A pretty big Raphael soft aqua brush. I used this one for the huge painting I did outside. Um, uh, let's see... I'm sorry that I'm missing a bunch of messages. I'll try uh, uh, seeing everything from now till the end uh, of the live. Uh, Chris De Bruyne, <laughs> can I explain why I don't clean your why I don't clean your palette? I like clean colors and always clean, but I know others feel differently. Yeah, I don't clean it because I don't mind. If it's really important for you to have clean colors, go for it and clean your your palette as much as necessary. Uh, my way is not the only way. Let's get this one here now. Notice how I'm muting the this orange a bit. I don't know why, just for balance sake, I'm gonna mute it a bit. Now look at the difference between light shadow, light shadow. That's what gives this the sense of three-dimensionality, that the sense of that zigzag pattern. I love this kind of a thing. Um, Mark, I like to change source photo on computer to grayscale to get the values. Yeah, that's a great tip. Uh, I do that often. 177 people, that's amazing. Thank you to each and every one of you. I really appreciate it. And here's the thing, because I'm painting, again, it's a bit hard to uh, focus on, you know, addressing all of the messages in the chat. I do want this to be a place where I do that. So uh, we're going to have future lives where I just talk and then it's going to be easier and you can bet it that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll answer like all questions if I can. Um, probably will be able to. Okay, so now here I made a mistake. This is in the light, and here I am correcting it fast. This is in the shadow, you see? Now if you use wet enough paint, and if you're quick enough, you'll catch your mistakes. And by the way, this should be lighter, because it's half towards the light source. Now let's make this lighter as well, because the light source is almost directly from that angle. Now the more we move left, the more the light source is going to be clear on the left side. Like so. Now, Let's connect this to the middle. While I'm at it, let's get a bit of red. Let's push this towards the final stages. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint around the lighter shapes in the middle, like this. A bit more orange, probably. The orange is really opaque. And we have this shadow here. I'm going to be quiet for a few moments. We're going to have some dead air. Here. Uh, to me, that's like good enough, honestly. That's it, you see? I just hint at it, hint that there is something here. Let's go like this. See, you don't need much more than that. Now, if you want to get it a little darker, a little bit of blue can go a long way. And I, because it's a focal point, I actually like the idea of playing around with the temperature, so I will inject some blue onto it, just where the deepest shadows are. See? And that, I think, concludes this section. Now, do you see the darker sections around the outside rim of uh, the melon? Let's get that done. So I mixed a bit of a green there. First here, you do see some, <clears throat> some darks, almost lost my voice, some darks here. So let's get those in just here and there. I think it will bring out the shape of the peel a little better. But here, look at this, this is important. I do currently have a nice contrast of light and shadow, so I don't want to compromise that. I'm just going to put maybe one here and we'll see how that looks. See? This darker edge. Actually it looks nice, so let's do that. Like this. Very thin green strip. Honestly, this looks done to me. I think I would call this one done. You know, I like this. I like this a lot. Um, not perfect, nothing is perfect, but I like this one. Let me take a picture, show it to you on the screen as we uh, wrap it up. And uh, let's see, maybe closer to the light source. I don't know, let's see, maybe here is what's going to work. 
Okay, so I'll, I snapped a photo. I'm going to send it uh, to my computer and I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see the final result. Obviously, the photo is blurry, so I'm going to have to take another one. <laughs> Sorry about that. I do want you to see the end result of this endeavor. Here we go. So this is a bit of a cleaner view of the color. It's not perfect, but a bit. Um, ooh, I like that. That looks good. That looks good. So let me um, bring my face over and let me add a picture here. <laughs> and we'll look at it as we conclude. I'm going to call this melon. And let's browse. I hope it didn't rotate it once again. Yes, good. Okay. It's going to be huge. Bear with me. Why does it keep rotating it? I'm going to have to figure out how to rotate it back. So if you give me one second, I know this is extremely clumsy. Uh, let's see here. Wait a sec. Okay, so we see it sideways. Nicely run. Nice one. Okay, let's see. Um, bum, bum, bum. Hmm. So why won't it let me rotate? What am I doing wrong? I'm going to try rotating the original. Um, I don't know why it's so important for me to show you. Like this, maybe? Okay, so I need to rotate it once more. <laughs> Clever. Will it work now? Thank you. So, so much. So here we go. Final result up close. Um, and don't worry, I'm going to show you the avocado again. Uh, but what I want to do is address some of the questions. Here's the avocado. You know what? I can just bring in the picture of the avocado. So let's do that. I already have it here. Uh, that's not that's not it. I'm gonna surround myself with my pictures. Avocado, okay. Make it smaller. I know, I know. I'm sorry about that. Thank you for bearing with me as I do all these things. This is unbelievable. Thank you so much. So many people here. I really appreciate it. And I hope you're having a good day so far. Or a good night. So here we go. I'm surrounded by uh, this session's paintings. I actually like them. I think they turned out decent. Um, so, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, final results. Here you can see them on paper as well. Uh, I had a really good time making these. And now you can see all the nuances here in the yellow. See the yellow? And how it turns into purple and whatever. Uh, so I'm going to take my trusty iPad if I'm able to, and read some of the questions. Let's see what you got here. If you have any questions, let me know now. Tried my best to be as responsive as I can, but we're gonna have to do some lives that are a little more just talky talk. Uh, that's how I'll be able to focus a little more. Uh, Rivka says, hooray. <laughs> Allison says, beautiful, lovely, sense of light and shadow. Thank you. Uh, Melon hanging on the wall. Uh, Jay Anderson, thanks for hanging out and sharing what you know and do so well. Thank you so much, Jay Anderson. Uh, Lola and P, the rotated version looks like a beautiful sunflower. I haven't thought of that. That's interesting. Marjorie Johnson, seems like a fast drying shift or is uh, it just the camera? Um, it's just because the later washes were a little darker. So the more, the thicker the paint is, the faster it's going to dry. This is actually almost fully dry. It's a little moist, but nothing too bad. You can actually paint over it again. Uh, the, this, the, earlier the layer is, the more time it's going to need to dry generally. Unless you're working very, like multiple, um, multiple glazes that are very uh, thin, what you'll find is that the first layer takes a long time, then the second layer takes less time, and so on and so forth. Um, let's see, Eliana T. Time, thank you for the uh, emoji, thank you so much. Uh, James Baker, thank you, Liron. I always learn a lot each time. You're a great teacher. Thank you, James. Uh, Donna, enjoying your accent. Goldie Hale, nice. Uh, that is art, not. Pff. I'm bearing with you. Art itself takes time. Uh, takes even more patience. Thank you, uh, Laurie Foster. What color can I use so I don't get a green sky when adding yellow to the blue? Hmm. That's interest. That's an interesting question. Hmm. That sometimes happens to me. 
if you use yellow ochre, you won't get a green, you'll get a very muted gray. So maybe try that. Uh, also, try not to do wet and wet. So don't put blue and then wet and wet yellow. Try separating the two, like I did here with, a, uh, not like I did here, paint the sky with a, with a blue, have the paper at an angle, sorry, you can't see, have the paper at an angle, paint the blue for the sky, and as you reach down for the buildings, paint yellow, but have it at an angle. So the worst thing that will happen is some of the blue is gonna bleed into the yellow, or flatten it, and then it's gonna stay somewhat the same um, spot, and that's how you make that separation. Um, I think that's the best tip I can give you, really. Just play around with the angle and separate the two. Don't go wet and wet. I, I don't recommend it if you don't want them to mix. Uh, maybe you're not going wet and wet, in which case you're, you're doing fine. Um, so I hope that helps. Hmm. Trish Dorton, I love the way you picked up the light and shadow. Thank you. Mark Ohio, yeah, I like the melon a lot more now. I told you, I told you, Mark. Uh, it's just a matter of light and shadow. Uh, no problem, like your painting, thank you so much. Kit Kito, I'm gonna do more practice of mixing colors. Go for it. Cauliflower, cauliflower, a lot of cauliflowers in question marks. Please do more sessions like this, please. You're a great teacher, thank you. I would love to do more than once a week. Um, we'll work towards it. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I really want to do more of these. It's always super fun. Richard Du, thanks Liron, really enjoy this one. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Cyan Patnik, Patnik, thanks Liron, it was a great session. And by the way, as a note, thank you so much to anyone who joins once again. As a quick note, um, these started as quick sketches, but notice how quickly it turned into, okay, I'm gonna slow down, I'm gonna think things through, and and they turned out really nice, I think, for, for I wouldn't necessarily call them quick sketches. So, you know, start with working slowly and deliberately, and you will learn how to enjoy and let go and, and paint looser, that's a big part of it. Um, Alex Waterville, thank you for giving your time. What is the issue with lemon yellow? I don't know, I just don't like it. It ends up with very artificial looking uh, greens and yellow. I like the less markery yellows and more ochery yellows, if that makes sense. Uh, Nicola Roy, you're amazing as always. Enjoy your day, evening, my dear from Canada. Thank you, XOXO, thank you so much, Nicole. That is art not proof. The avocado looks great, but the other thing sh would be a big challenge to paint because it doesn't look like something really familiar. Um, uh, the asparagus or which other thing or the melon uh, yeah that definitely some of the other ones are, are a bit challenged are a bit challenging um, I went for the ones that kind of felt natural to me trust your gut on this uh, if you're looking at a reference photo and you're you really dislike it don't force yourself to paint it I know sometimes it can be running away from a challenge but if you really just don't like it, don't force yourself. Find the things you enjoy painting, paint those, okay? It doesn't mean you're staying in your comfort zone. Paint hard things, but just the ones you like. I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, Barb White, this was my favorite session. Cool, thank you so much. I, I really am happy to hear. Uh, Miss H.A., what is the live schedule? Love the session. So basically, as of now, I'm doing every Thursday, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time. So that's 9 a.m. In New York, it's 9 a.m. Uh, here in Israel, it's 4 p.m. That's the best time I, I've found so far. It works well for me. Um, Javi Jav, red. I don't know what, in what context. Sorry about that. Uh, Rivka Winter, use a warm yellow on top of cool blue. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's I love this mix. I, I also did it here. Uh, sorry, you can't see the desk, but I did it in the melon. Marjorie Johnson, interesting observation with drying times. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to show you the... I forgot to show you the cauliflowers. That's why people wrote cauliflowers. Let me do this. I promise I'll, I'll show you. Sorry about that. So funny, I forgot. Okay, so let's do this real quick. Don't worry. It's not going to take too much time. I'll just show you real quick. You really don't need much time to see the effect in action. It's really easy. So just a bunch of blues. Blue, blue, blue. Then a bit of red just to create a bit of a darker color. Here we go. Okay. Do you want to count to 30 with me? No, we don't have to do that. So now, look at this. So I can actually show you. Look at the sheen. Okay, there is a lot of sheen here. It's shiny. It's still wet. That's great. At this stage, let me show you. You can do wet and wet. Now, if you want your wet and wet to show well, use thicker paint than what's, than what's on paper. You see? Right, let me show you. When you use thicker paint, it lasts. It's going to spread out a little, but it, generally it will last. Now... You see how it's starting to dry in some spots? See how quick that happens? Now, 
if I come back with wet paint, look at how much this paint moves here. Let's come back with that. Now it's going to push aside everything. See? And what this amounts to is a light in the middle and dark on the sides. And that is the cauliflower. That is the beast that is cauliflower. I can come back with just pure water and look at that. And that's an effect. Some people use it as an effect, but you see? Now, with time, as it dries, you will see a pattern that looks like a cauliflower. Okay? You will see it. Uh, you can see it here, but if I show you on the better camera, see? That's cauliflowers, and the way you get rid of them is what I just mentioned. I'm going to show it to you once it dries, but what I just mentioned, you either do the wet and wet quickly, and you have to always be aware of how wet the paint is on paper. You will get that. That's, that's just, it's instinctual. You have to practice it. You have to do it in order to perceive it. Uh, or once it's too dry, you stop, and you let it dry fully. Okay? That's my tip for that, cauliflowers. Look at that. I'm going to show you. See? See this pattern? That is the infamous cauliflower. Here we go again. Very infamous cauliflower. And that's all there is to it. That's the boogeyman. Don't worry about it. You will get some of that. When I work large, I sometimes get cauliflowers in the sky because I wasn't fast enough with the wash. That's fine. That happens. Um, let's see. A little bit red, use a little red in your blue. So I haven't uh, used a bit of it. Interesting opinion on pineapple on pizza, Gabramovich. Um, I actually have no problem with almost anything on pizza. I love pizza. So put tuna on it, put pineapple. I just am not always good with really spicy food. Uh, if it's a bit spicy, that's fine, but not too spicy. Uh, I love pineapple on pizza. Maybe we should do one day like a Q&A that has nothing to do with art. Let me know if you're interested. Alison Conway, I add a lizard in between so it doesn't go green. Got this from Michael Soloviev. He's genius, Michael Soloviev, yes. Jalapeno pepper and pineapple on pizza is the best. Well, for me, I'll skip the jalapeno, but I love the pineapple. Rivka Winter, so glad it started. I started digging into my watercolors and looking at other uh, watercolor artists' work again. Yeah, it really helps. Um, to just reach out and see other people's work. It opens up your mind. It allows you to learn uh, new things that you haven't thought of. I try and do this all the time. Rachel Eng subbed. Thank you so much. By the way, if you found out about me from this live session, I would really appreciate if you let me know. I, it's just curious. I'm just curious to know if people actually find the channel in these lives. So let me know. Um, and if you sub, that's just like, thank you so much. Marjorie Johnson, I'm, I'm forwarding this to people I have encouraged and gifted uh, paints to. Oh, cool. I hope they are now following you. Thank you so much. Goldie Hell, when, you're plan to, uh, when you plan your painting, do you paint them as a flat object? I'm trying to learn how to see like an artist. Uh, thanks, Paul. Um, do you paint them like flat object? I'm not sure what it means, but for the first layer, I sometimes treat it as a flat object in a way. I think if that's what you mean. I paint over it, right through everything. I don't care much about the values, but generally you do have to look at it as a three-dimensional object as much as possible. You do have the other route, the pure impressionistic route. If it's dark, you paint it dark. If it's light, you paint it light and you go over every section of the painting and you just, you go over this section, it's light, you paint it light. Then you paint it a little darker, then lighter. And hopefully if you did a good job, it will connect to something that looks three-dimensional, but it's always better to visualize it three-dimensional, in my opinion. Um, Dave Lowe, glad you digged out your watercolor. Oh, yeah, Rivka. Uh, Miss H.A., thanks. It's almost 9 p.m. here in Pakistan. Cool. Wow, 9 p.m., that's, uh, that's really late. Uh, but I'm happy Pakistan can tune in, and it's probably ideal. It's probably an ideal hour uh, around 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Chris De Bruyne, uh, 6 a.m. on the West Coast, nice way to wake up. Wow, that's so cool. So you're actually watching, yeah, because because the West Coast is uh, three hours uh, behind, I believe, right? Javi Dub, context, um, red. Question was asked about the yellow and blue in the sky. Injecting a little red will help with the mix turning green. Oh, okay, interesting. So you want to avoid it getting green. Interesting, I never tried it. Hmm, how would you do that? that I may try it. Uh, like using both red and huh, and blue and yellow. Interesting. Rivka, I, have, I had never never heard uh, that term before. Thanks for the demo. Marjorie Johnson, I'm going to try painting cauliflower using cauliflower paint. 
Uh, that would be a good way to do it. I saw this artist that paints amazing things using these effects. I don't remember uh, their, his name. He was on this excellent blog that I don't remember the name of either. Huh. If you look, if you Google Joseph's Bookwitch Workshop experience, you'll find this. Let me just find it for you. Let me find it for you. It's really good. Um, Joseph Zbukovic workshop experience. I'm, I'm doing this real research for you now. And then I find this website, Seamless Expression. I'm going to write it in the chat. So see, I'm going to just link to it. Seamless Expression. This is a website you really want to check out. This dude is brilliant. Um, wait a sec. Wait a second. Check out Seamless Expression. He's so good. So what he does is he documents his experiences in different workshops. Joseph Bukovic, Alvaro Castane. And there is another guy I don't remember. That's the work you'll have to do. You'll find it on his website and is under his workshop reviews. Who uses these effects amazingly. Let me try it. Let me find it for you. Come on. I can't do half a job. Stefan Berry is his name. Um, why can't I find a blog? Okay, blog, workshop reviews. I'm going to find a guy for you. Alvaro Castane, Bjorn Bernstrom. Oh, that's the guy. Okay, I'm going to review this person for my painting masters. I'm going to write it down for myself now, urgently. Wow, this guy is incredible. Um, let's see here. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write it down in the chat in just a moment, so don't worry about it. Three. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Bjorn, I don't know, I don't think I've ever, yeah, I've never shown this artist, Bern Strom. Okay, so I'm going to link, uh, I'm going to link the specific page so you can check it out. This guy uses cauliflower effects like crazy, and you have to check it out. This guy is genius. Um, okay. Jordan Libby, almost midnight in Taiwan. Thank you for the session. So many tips, both from you and also from the friendly comment section. Yes, people are smart here. Kit Kito, any way to save save cauliflowers? Um, once the cauliflower is done, it's pretty much done. Here's a quick, funny way of saving the cauliflower. Let, let me, let me, uh, I'll, I'll entertain the thought. So let's say you did this and you get the cauliflower starting. What I would do is take more water and water down the whole thing. So you basically push the cauliflower all the way to the side. Let me show you. I keep being tempted to show you more things. Uh, you're very convincing in the chat. So here's a blue. And here is me getting a cauliflower. Okay, just putting wetter paint where it's not, it doesn't belong. Here's what I can do. Grab more water and just wet the whole thing. See? No cauliflower. That's, it's a bit of a sneaky trick, but it does work. Let me show you again. I'm going to dry it up a bit. Use some stronger colors. Thicker paint. Now dry it. Just to speed up the process. Now come back with wet paint. Getting those cauliflowers. Come back with more water. Water it all down. See? So you're kind of giving your paper a beating. Uh, but a good paper should handle that. So there's your magic trick of the day. How to neutralize cauliflowers. Never thought I'd do that, but here we go. Um, so yeah, Gabrielovich says my man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy It's funny. I, I enjoy these lives so much. I should probably do more. Definitely. And I enjoyed getting your email too. And I believe I answered, right? Uh, Raimundo Corona, I like the washtower. What are the chances to do some challenges every so often? I'll try doing another one. Let me do this. I'm going to write it down for myself to think up another challenge soon. Where's my pencil? It keeps disappearing on me. Uh, challenges. Challenges. Writing it down for myself. Holzy Walzy Woo, just found you on live now. Cool, that's amazing. So thank you so much for, for discovering me and maybe if you subscribe. Rivka uh, Winter, found you a couple of days ago, but for some reason hadn't subscribed until today. That's, I get it. It's exposure many times. You need to see a channel a few times to subscribe. Laura Merrifield, first live session I've been able to catch, but I love your videos. Thanks for the inspiration. You got it. And I'm leaving these up so you can watch them later whenever you want. Genevieve uh, Martin, A. Don't know what that means, but A. 
Gabrimovic, 11.44 p.m. here. Can't miss the Leroy Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Natalie Kelly, it's 11.44 p.m. in Australia right now. So are you both in Australia? I don't remember if you told me where you are uh, situated, located in Gabrimovic. Um, TYR59, I'm sorry I can't read Arabic. I wish I could. I can speak, not read. Maybe understand more. Um, Indranil Sarkar, although I don't use watercolor much, your explanation of light and shadow helps me a lot. Thank you. Uh, Goldie Hale, I love Joseph Z, my favorite. Yeah, he's amazing. Uh, apart from you, of course. Thank you. Uh, he's, he's incredible. So, yeah. Cubs win. Sorry I'm late. Did you say brand of brushes? Also, time for lives. Yes, time for lives is 9 a.m. Eastern time every Thursday. That's what I try and aim for. Sometimes it changes. Brushes, lots of Escodas. Here we go. Escoda Barocco. Escoda Perla, I believe. I keep forgetting. Yeah, Perla. Tracy Lebenson. I'm going to link in the description box as well. Bunch of them. Leonard, Raphael, a bunch of brands. Uh, Mapesh91. I joined late, so not sure if you already talked about this, but what paper and paint did you use today? By the way, I love your channel. This is the first stream I've seen. I'm looking forward to more. Thank you so much, Mapesh, for joining. Um, what uh, paper is Saunders Waterford? That's easy. It's cold press, 300 grams. Um, and paint. Um, so this is Paul Rubens. I have shown them. Uh, if you go back, I actually showed the actual paints here. Here they are. The names of them. You can't read it, unfortunately, because the camera is not good enough. So sorry about that. But Paul Rubens pink palette I actually reviewed it on the channel. If you just search for Liron pink palette, you'll find it. Uh, that link is the same. Oh, uh, it shouldn't be the same. It should be the specific one. Give it a try. Chris De Bruyne, you can also spray with spritzer bottle, which I do. Uh, thanks for the trick. Uh, how to mute colors behind glass. Hmm, interesting. If you can't tell a color, use Photoshop or some other software to see it more clearly. Generally, it will be gray-blue. Um, the trick is to use one of these if you have to. Use this to isolate a value. So look at my hair. You see, you can isolate the value and color, sorry, color too. Look at my face. This is kind of a pink, then it's a bit of a purple, then it's a bit of a brown. See? See how that works? Blue. Use a viewfinder uh, to see the color more accurately through it. That will help, uh, I hope. Uh, Brett, any tips for drawing horses from every angle? Wow, uh, mannequinize. Watch Proko's mannequinization video because it sounds like you know uh, specifically what you're talking about. Um, Proko's video video on turning, look, uh, drawing things 3D. Um, you have to learn some anatomy and use some references, and then you can rotate some of it in your mind. So let me show you. For example, I can't really. Let me show you this real quick. It's interesting, so I want to show you. Let's say I have this uh, horse leg, which I don't know how to draw, so I'm just going to wing it, okay? Maybe something like that, right? So that's the hoof, and that's the leg. I don't know how to turn this in space, so how to make this look like maybe it's, instead of like this, it's towards us. What I do know is to turn it into a simplified cylinder. So something like this. And then I know how to rotate this cylinder in space so that it's facing towards us. And then I can do the same for the hoof uh, and the leg. So I'll put a cylinder and then I'll imagine the shapes. It's really hard. I'm not there yet. But then create the hoof, you see. And I don't know if it has this right, this kind of a thing here. So it's probably really bad, but you get the point. You have to turn it into a simplified three-dimensional shape. And that's not always easy. You have to practice these. Practice doing a bunch of cubes uh, in perspective from imagination. That's not really a cube. That's a, some kind of a rectangle, you see, like a box. This is a cardboard box we got accidentally. Um, and then try rotating it. What would this look like if I look at it from below? So then you go, and I know this is highly confusing, but uh, from below, it will look like uh, this, maybe. See? Learn to do this. That's the basis. That's the basis for all of it. That's how I did this shape, too. I uh, hope that makes sense. 
Uh, let's see. Need to learn uh, for a comic I'm writing. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's hard. Uh, comics are hard. <sighs> Wara Wara Anaparina. Really love the bounced light on the cast shadow of the seed. Thank you so much. That's that's just luck, I guess. But uh, I'm happy with how it turned out this area. Gabramovich. Ah, yes. I received your email. Many thanks for the tips and the comp uh, compliment. I'm from the Philippines. Yes, that's right. You just said it. I forgot. Philippines. Um, or you said it earlier. Brett, need to learn for a comic, read that. Corinne Mararnef, I'm not into still life, but happy to pop in just to say hi, and I love your videos, Leroy. Thank you so much, Corinne. What are you into? What kind of subjects do you like uh, to paint? Let me know. Goldie Hell, how important is type of paper? Do we avoid cheap paper? Yes, try and avoid cheap paper as much as you can. My number one tip for using cheap paper is whatever you do, in the first washes, use more water because that's going to prevent the uneven drying sometimes, okay? Use a hair dryer to dry it fast, because the problem with lower quality paper is it dries unevenly. That's a problem. Uh, so use a hair dryer if you have to, and so on. That's my biggest advice for you, I guess. Um, also, in later washes, obviously, you won't use as wet of a paint. I would recommend getting good paper. Ultimately, that's the one thing that's a bit hard to work against, okay? Um, Deb Armstrong found you on Instagram. Love your work, especially uh, the contrast of lights and darks. Your enthusiasm is fantastic. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Deb. Uh, Mepesh, thank you. You got it. Natalie Kelly, how long have you been painting watercolor for? About five years, something like that. Five to six years now. Um, Chris says great tips. Thanks, Brett. Thank you for the tips. Very helpful. Ryan Wang says boring. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna entertain everyone. That's just the way it is. Uh, that is art not poof. You have to ask your horse nicely to hold its leg up. Yeah, that's a possibility if you have access to a horse. Wara Wara on a parima. Have you ever thought about going back into oils? Uh, not going back because I never used oils, but maybe starting using oils? Maybe in the future, yes. Um, definitely um, uh, acrylics. I love acrylics from time to time. It's just a different medium. You can continue layering and fixing mistakes. It's fun to mess around with it. Um, I don't know if ultimately I'm going to um, persevere with it, but, but watercolor is definitely my medium. Uh, Corina uh, says, uh, I do portraits exclusively, meaning I try to do portraits. Yeah, portraits are beautiful. Um, in watercolor, you can achieve so much because of the softer transitions and the effect. It's so cool. Uh, Wara Wara, I have a great landscape oil palette of cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and uh, bright uh, opaque red, Prussian blue and white. Sounds great. Sounds really good. Uh, when Joseph Zbukovic paints, it seems like his paper stays wet very longer than my Saunders Waterford. Um, sometimes he's using more water. He does work fast. Maybe climate has something to do with it in Australia. And also the angle. Have the paper at an angle. It will help a lot. Um, Roman Diazzi, following you from Montevideo, Uruguay. Always learning a lot from you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Montevideo, the, the home of Alvaro Castanet. Zine Kalsang, why use a brighter color to make the shadow um, look darker on the, mellow, on the melon? Why use a, a brighter color to make the shadow look darker on the melon? I'm not sure what you mean, but I will say this. When you go darker here, it really brings out the light here. When you leave this light, it brings out the dark here. They always work together. Okay, that's the point uh, of that balance. So I'm going to wrap it up soon. Let's see. Last questions. If you have uh, Pence Palacio uh, thought about core watercolors. Love your videos, by the way. Yes, I have. I hope to get them in the future. Haven't used them uh, yet. Lori Foster, Carbra oils use water as a solvent. Hmm, interesting. I know some oils do that. I don't, I'm not familiar with Cobra oils. Um, is it a brand or is it actually a, a painter? Let me know. Uh, I think this is a good spot to wrap it up. I really want to thank you so, so much for joining in. A lot of people have been here today, so thank you. Um, I have to go <laughs> continue working on a bunch of stuff, uh, but I really appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed doing, uh, seeing me paint this melon, this um, avocado uh, for you. I'm going to do more of these, many more. Next Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time is going to be hopefully the next live session. Um, I'll try squeezing in some more in the future in between showing you what I work on. I did promise I'll show you the comics. So for anyone who is loyal enough to stay, let me show you my manga page right here. So this is something I started working on. Uh, it's incredible. Still have 145 people in the house. So let me show you. Okay. 
this is a manga page I started working on, my comic. It's going to be a story about Shaolin monks. And this guy, you still don't know who he is. It's still a secret. You will learn more about him as the story progresses. Um, this is his friend, Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> and I hope you'll enjoy this one. It's going to be like, I, for the longest time, I wanted to do a story, like an actual story. Uh, so this is it. Um, look at the details with the bamboos I have to show you. I was bamboozled by the bamboos. I have to show you this. There's a lot of details here that you can't see really because it's just super duper. What is this here? It's smoke up there at the village? Who knows? We'll see. Um, the water. I like this effect a lot. Uh, so we had a great time working on this one. Uh, it's the first page out of something that's probably going to be a hundred pages long. Uh, I'm still uh, trying to squeeze in the story. Uh, I have a lot of work to do with this, but um, for the longest time I wanted to create my own manga, my own comic, kind of Japanese style. Uh, we'll do my best, we'll keep you updated. I am not sure if I'm going to just post it for free. Maybe I'll, uh, I don't know, print it. Maybe I'll work with a publishing house. Maybe I'll work with just a printer and sell it myself. I have no idea. Maybe I'll do the whole thing by myself, maybe I'll crowdfund it, I have no idea, but it's going to be super fun, like, I can guarantee you that. Um, thank you so, so much. Uh, is the squirrel's name Ruth? No, maybe I should call it Ruth. Um, I really appreciate you uh, joining me today. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day, night, have a good night's sleep, rest, stay safe, stay healthy. I will talk to you again real soon. I'm going to now stop the live. So take care, we'll talk again real soon.